Revolution Esports Indonesia and Gizmo of Malaysia. And uh, we're going to have to see how things pan out. This is a loser bracket match here, so someone is being sent home here in the Armageddon Dojo Asia Grand Slam. And big shout out to all our sponsors of the event, of course. E Club, uh, AMD, Starhub, Asus, RGN, Rapture Gaming Network, Zook, Sonic Gear, as well as Power Logic, who are making all of this possible. Here in Singapore, we've gathered together 12 of the best upcoming teams in Southeast Asia, flown them into the Marina Bay Sands, well, flown them into Singapore, and they've gathered here at the Marina Bay Sands Convention Center for, well, some fantastic live Dota 2 action. And that's what we're seeing here. That's where we are now. It's Gizmo Gaming up against Neolution Esports Indonesia in a loser bracket match to decide who goes home and who keeps their tournament hopes alive. There's $20,000 in prize money, sponsorship gear, and sponsorship contracts up for grabs for the top three placing teams. And we're going to find out who stays alive here. We've got Neolution Esports Indonesia over on the Radiant team. Over on the die side, it's Gizmo Gaming, the Malaysian boys, led by their captain, Glory Zs. And uh, we're going to see who... Well, it's going to be Gizmo with the, with the first pick as well as first ban. They're over on that die side. They ban the Keeper of the Light. Here we did see Sneak through the pool last game round. Batrider being taken out by Neo Illusion Esports. And now we see a Rubik ban from Gizmo. So here's like Nyx Assassin, Mag still in the pool. A lot of those sort of powerful team fight heroes. The AoE lockdown of a Mag ultimate. Carapace as well, just one of those completely deadly spells to go up against. So a lot of strong heroes left in this pool. And uh, a lot of potential for absolutely devastation, especially with this Rubik ban. A hero you haven't really seen get banned out all that much, but it will make it through here. And Gizmo, well, maybe they're looking at picking up some sort of big AoE powerhouse ultimate as a result. That's probably where you look to go if you're going to ban that Rubik. Pick up something like a mag. Pick up something which you don't want stolen. Your mag ultimate, maybe a faceless void ultimate, whatever it may be. Some big, powerful AoE ultimate. Tide Ravage is another possibility, but you're probably not planning to pick up Tide from the start. Very few teams sort of look to get Tide off right off the bat. But I will wait. have to wait and see what Neo Illusion Esports look to ban here, because with, well... The Batrider ban and Rubik, well, Rubik being banned sort of leaves so much in the pool. So they're going to be thinking, what do we look to ban out when this pool is just so wide open? With Mag, Nyx Assassin, uh, Shadow Demon really the go-to support left in the pool. Uh, Phantom Lance is still in there as well, but there's no PL Coddle combo, so we're not going to see that duo together. But PL still a viable pick. The other big hero that I feel, still feel it hasn't been touched is the Life Stealer. Life Stealer is still in the pool, so I think New Illusion Easterbolt needs to figure out what they want to give away potentially as the first pick and what two heroes they can get in return. That's really what they're thinking. We're taking a lot of time with this second banner there. It's chewing through their reserve time. And I think this is a this is a ban worth using a lot of reserve time. Once you get later on the draft, it's a lot sort of more clear cut about what you want to pick, what you want to ban. So saving the reserve time for later isn't always necessarily a good idea considering those last few picks are often a lot easier to decide what you want to get. The early ones, a lot trickier, a lot more important, a lot more crucial to the overall flow of this of this draft really. And uh, subsequently the game as a whole. So we'll we'll see what they want to do. They've actually chewed through almost all their extra time. A Puck ban. Wow, that came out of completely left field. Puck getting banned out here. I think this is, I mean, there's two reasons for this. One, maybe they know that Gizmo likes to play Puck. And two, they want to leave this pool wide open. They're going to leave Mag, Nyx Assassin, Lifestealer all in the pool. Their opponents can pick up one of those powerful heroes and then they get two. Maybe we're also looking at a Shadow Demon. I imagine Neo Illusion will want to grab the Shadow Demon with these first two picks because of the lack of support heroes. With Rubik banned out, Shadow Demon's really the strongest support left in the pool. Well, I say that there's a Nyx Assassin, but the strongest five position support. Nyx Assassin generally played as that four role. You want to get some farm, some items on this hero. You can't really play it as that hard support. So probably see a Shadow Demon pick with a, something like a Magnus. Alternatively, we see the Mag with maybe a Life Stealer. If you get the Shadow Demon, the problem is then you see Gizmo maybe getting themselves the Life Stealer if they want to use that as their carry. Mag though, no hesitations though. Near Illusion Esports immediately grab that one back, uh, grab that one up, and they've got to be quick with this second pick because they've already used a lot of their extra time. They've got just about 30 seconds now left to pick this second hero of theirs Five before we swing it back over to the Gizmo side, the Malaysian boys. See what they want to get with this second and third pick of theirs. 22 seconds. Time is a ticking. The Indonesians wisp. Wow. There's something we've seen one other team do this tournament. It was Horosh. We had Mr. Keo playing a bit of wisp earlier on, and uh, we're going to bring it back here. It's going to come in the hands of Neolution Esports Indonesia. So most likely we see a third pick to be some kind of a carry, something to combo with the Wiz. You're looking at something like the CK, maybe a Life Stealer, or maybe you go like full Southeast Asia style and go for a Wiz Ricky Maru. The Wiz Ricky was one of my personal favorite heroes to combo with a Wiz, but not really very standard. The Wiz CK is a much more sort of safe, uh, conventional way to play with the Wiz. So we'll see whether or not Gizmo look to sort of basically prevent them getting the CK, maybe grab CK themselves, but CK not a hero you can easily fit in your lineup. The question is, do they look to get something to counter the, the Wisp? Get it something like a Disruptor. 
have the glimpse to send back either the Wisp or the hero that he brings to the fight. So there's potential for a, for a Disruptor pick here. The other question is, well, do they leave Shadow Demon in the pool? Shadow Demon doesn't do great against the Wisp. Um, he's, I mean, obviously you can disrupt yourself, maybe disrupt the hero he brings in, or just at least defensively disrupt your ally who's getting focused down. But it is still that sort of go-to five position support, depending on how aggressive they want to be. Shadow Demon and Nyx, not the most aggressive duo. You can lead the disruption into an impale, but both those heroes, or Nyx Assassin especially, you want some levels, you want some farm. You want to get that level six, you want to get some arcane boots, and Shadow Demon, you want to be sort of comparing more with a four position hero who doesn't need levels and farm as much. Something like a Lena or a Leshrac. Something with a, a, a bit more a bit more firepower early on. Nyx Assassin needs the levels before you get that damage coming out. Two picks coming out. They steal the CK. Oh, oh, that is just rude. They steal the CK from the Wisp. The long lost lovers. Sarcross lovers even. They just nothing is going their way. Wisp and CK just want to be together and well, Gizmo say no. They take the CK for themselves and well with the Luna pickup. It does give them some awkward lanes. We're possibly looking at either dual lanes or running something like a Luna as a solo. Luna can solo mid, or alternatively, Luna can play the safe lane solo. CK needs some support. Though. I, I say he needs support. Maybe we're looking at a CK solo mid versus mag, but that just sounds completely uh, un unconventional and just something. Sure, they're both melee heroes. So they're both kind of tanky, but mag with a shockwave, the AOE spam is just such a better mid hero than something like a CK. So CK dual lane. Uh, maybe they go, yeah, like they say, could go dual lanes. Dual lane Luna in, in the safe lane, dual lane CK at mid, or vice versa. Alternatively, you run Luna as a solo, and then run the CK with the supports. So a couple different options for the Gizmo side, and whoa. It's a Wisp Juggernaut. And they pick up the Juggernaut nice and early to ensure that they get it, that doesn't get banned out. I don't expect Gizmo would have banned that, but Nilush in Esports Indonesia not taking any chances, and also just wanting to say, hey, we're going to Juggernaut, what are you going to do about it? Because it's not a hero there's any obvious counters to. I mean, you can get something like an Enigma to black hole him during the spin. And if there are obvious counters, well, Neolution Esports can ban anything out that they're worried about. As a third pick, picking up one of your key heroes. I mean, unless you really want to keep something secret about it, it's not really, it's not really a pick that's going to change how Gizmo look to play this. Even when they see the Juggernaut, they're like, oh, they picked Juggernaut, we've got to change our picks. Because for Gizmo, they've already picked up their carries, the CK, the Luna. So their draft is pretty much set. They need sort of an offlane hero of some sort regardless something like an Enigma or a Nature's Prophet or a Windrunner. The Juggernaut pick isn't going to affect that all too much. Maybe it does a bit as far as what can actually survive. Sending something like a, a Windrunner there against an offlane Juggernaut can maybe escape the Blade Fury when you have that when you have that Windrunner up for the extra movement speed. Lone Druid still in the pool if you want to go that route for the offlane hero. But Lone Druid as an offlane hero, when you've already got CK and Luna, there's just too much time. You've got three carry, he carry heroes essentially in your lineup and it just won't work out well. So I have a feeling they're going to look for something with a bit more general utility for these team fights. Something with a bit more of a toolbox to spell. Something like a Windrunner. I feel fits very well. Darkseid would have been great for them, but they actually banned out Darkseid themselves. A bit surprised to see them ban that out. Would have maybe expected them to pick it up because they're lacking in the team fight department. They need something with some team fight, which is Darkseid, Enigma, maybe a Sanking, but Sanking, they've already got too much melee. They need just strong supports and that's where we see Lena gets banned out. Shadow Demon, not really... I, I say, I, at this point, Lena's almost more dangerous than a Shadow Demon pick. Lena combos a lot better with a Nyx and CK than a Shadow Demon does. Nyx, in some ways, acts as that setup, at setup hero. You can lead off with the Impale. You can just use it as the, as the initiator. And then you follow up with the burst damage of a Lena. I definitely agree with this Lena man thing. It, it makes more sense than just banning out something like a Shadow Demon. We may still see a Shadow Demon ban. Quite likely, we see something like a Leshrac being banned out as well. Maybe even uh, just a... Go back old school. Man out of Crystal Maiden. Crystal Maiden with a, the double nuke. The Frostbite and Nova. The slow with a, with a disable. Has a lot of killing power when you combine that with the Chaos Knight. Same goes with the Luna and Ancient Apparition. There's, there's a partner for the Chaos Knight that we're going to see banned out. As uh, two more bands. Night Stalker are going to be the uh, fifth and final band coming out from the Malaysian squad. As uh, we're going to have to see what's going to be this last band. They seem to be focusing on the support heroes. They're not worried about the offliners just yet. There's no real obvious offlaner on the Gizmo side, but even so, they're, they're just leaving whatever they want in the pool. I mean, I think at this point there's too many to ban them all out, unless there's one that's going to cause them problems. Maybe like a Windrunner. As mentioned, Windrunner with Shackle Shots going for an Arcane Mech build would be very useful for this Gizmo side. They've got heroes who are a bit mana dependent, who could do with a mech, they haven't got any mech fire yet. So maybe Windrunner's a hero they could say, okay, this could cause some problems, let's ban it out. Well, one more ban is going to be coming out here as uh, we do make our way to the last few picks. They've only got, as said, 10 seconds out. They used up all that reserve time nice and early on. And as uh, just a couple more seconds here with this last ban. 
It's a Shadow Demon. So it is it is still focusing these bands on the support here. Is it least less track in the pool? Less track slightly more farm dependent than some of these other support options, like Shadow Demon Lena can really fit that five position. Less track, well, you generally want to be a four position support. Playing as a five position hard support is a bit harder. You do go for that lightning storm build. You're not gonna be seeing Edict on a five position less track. I say that, they'll probably look to just prove me wrong and do something completely crazy. But this fourth pick now coming out. Gizmo have done something right. They've got lots of reserve time here. They don't have, they're not in too much pressure just to rush this pick and they can sort of think things through, but it's, I'd be surprised if they pick up their offline here. Most likely they go for their support first. And it's the Disruptor. There's your Wisp counter. Glimpse to send back a hero. Most likely the Wisp here, because if you try Glimpse the Juggernaut, he can Blade Fury and then, hey, that Glimpse ain't gonna work. And immediately, Queen of Pain is grabbed up. So we see a Queen of Pain as the other solo. So Queen of Pain and Mag are gonna be the two solos here for the Neo Lucian Esports side. And then they have the Wisp Juggernaut. It's a dual lane for now. They're looking at one more hero to finish off the try line or possibly just get a jungling support hero. The Enigma still in the pool, as is Chen and Enchantress. Even a Nature's Prophet in the jungle could be a nice way to, a nice sort of additional ganking power that they can add to their lineup. And then you've got these great gankers. You have the Wisp Juggernaut who can fly anywhere on the map. The Queen of Pain, who's ultra mobile, and Nature's Prophet, who can just be anywhere, anytime. Five seconds remaining. Gizmo, what's going to be this last pick, though? They have the Disruptor, Nyx, Chaos Knight, a likely tri lane. Unless they want to run those dual lanes, as mentioned, but we do need something which can really solo. And unless we're seeing Nyx Assassin as a solo mid, it's not standard, but we could be looking at Nyx solo mid in something like a, a Luna safe lane solo. And with a less track pick, we could just... We could very well be seeing that. Are they going offensive trial? We may see our first offensive trial lane of the tournament. They send the Luna as a safe lane solo, the Nyx Assassin mid, and then you've got a tr strong trial lane. Chaos Knight disrupt the less track. There's your offensive trial lane. I don't see any other way of really doing this. Uh, it's They've got no strong off lane hero. When you've got no off lane hero, you either abandon the off lane or you send a trial lane there. And right now they've got a good trial lane to go there with. With Juggernaut is hard to trial lane against, but not impossible. Wiz doesn't really add a whole lot to that trial and Juggernaut's been obviously fantastic in that trial and versus trial and matchup and I think the big issue is here for the Illusion Esports is there aren't too many easy heroes to combine their, to put in their trial and an Enigma they're going really greedy with the jungler this is something that can be exploited by an offensive, offensive trial line we'll have to wait and see if they do go with it we won't I won't be able to say for some time but you guys will get to see on the live stream or hear it live in Singapore as I can't reveal the lanes to the teams as they can maybe hear me I'm looking at you guys up there on the booth but what I can do is introduce our two teams over on the Radiant side, representing Indonesia. It's the Neo Lucian Esports Indonesia squad. We've got CL playing the Juggernaut, Wisp in the hands of R9, Black Diamond playing the Enigma, Mag being played by Queng, and then finally, where is that last fella? It's Accelerate playing the Queen of Pain over on the Dire side. The team who are much like their Indonesian opponents trying to just stay alive in this tournament in this loser bracket match. It's Team Gizmo Gaming from Malaysia. We've got Ken Rio playing the Nyx Assassin. Glory's playing the Disruptor. ZGL playing the Luna. Chaos Knight in the hands of Melody. And then Lestrak being played by Shawns. Here's your showdown bottom lane. Whoa! Enigma and Disruptor, they spot each other out here. They would have been in range of one another. The Radiant team knows something's awry. They're expecting some warding happening in their own jungle, maybe behind their tower. Maybe just looking to block off this pool camp. They know something. Something is up. And I'm... Is this... Oh, yep, offensive try... Is it going to say bottom? That's really the big question here. They're up against an Enigma jungle. An Enigma in the jungle cannot come out of help. Wisp, Wisp Jugger on their own, at least for the early game. Is Wisp going to get this d ward in? He drops... He needs, to, he needs to make sure they can use this pool, because the problem is... Their, well, their, their trial lane, well, it's essentially a dual lane, is so much weaker than the Gizmo lane. They really need to make sure they can use this pool to just basically deny XP and farm. Gizmo are going to look to try to catch out heroes who are trying to use that pool. I like how Disruptor hasn't leveled up anything. He can go for the Glimpse maybe for a kill. He can go for the Kinetic Field if they need. He's got options. If Wiz tries to tether away or something, or Jugs is trying to spin and run away, you can Glimpse him back in. Disruptor doing the smart thing here and just not leveling anything up and... Well, it looks like, so far, d -Ward not achieving anything for the Radiant team. And the main thing is here for the Radiant team. Keep this lane push back as much as possible. And, oh, look at this Observer Ward placement. It's still, I believe, blocking. And Wisp, well, he's not going to go to pull this, but he's going to notice this in just a second. 
Mag in the mid lane in the 1v1 matchup. He's up against Ken Rio. Nyx Assassin versus the Mag. Over in top lane, it's the 1v1 matchup. I love this decision. Mag, who you generally send as an offlane hero, has gone mid. They send Queen of Pain to the offlane in a 1v1 matchup against Luna. This is a hero who can beat the Luna in the 1v1 matchup. Has the range advantage. Has a strong harass with Shadow Strike. Look at this zoning out we're seeing here. Luna being constantly pushed back. Saying, come on, man, just give me some farm. Give me some farm. Harass, harass, harass. That's the name of the game at top lane. Bottom lane for Nilush and Esports. It's a much more passive lane, though. The one lane they can get aggressive is, is strangely enough, their off lane. Their off lane solo is their most aggressive lane right now. As uh, Quang at the mid lane, well, he's in that one more match against the Knicks. Both these two heroes will be looking to rush that bottle up. As, oh no, Wiz suddenly realizes, hey, my pull's blocked. Where is that ward? Where is that D ward going to have to come in? He's got another sentry if he wants to try and use it. I feel at this point with his bottom lane, they need to use it. Because look, this lane's being pushed back. And once this lane starts pushing up around here, once we get up around here, or even just here, look where Wisp and Jug are. They're stuck at their own tower. They are not leaving the safety of their tower. They are stuck way, way back. Jug may be going to look to get an XP range here. He can always Blade Fury out of this if he gets in too much trouble. But for the most part, it's a very tough lane. Oh, Wisp. Not going to succeed in getting that D ward off. Does drop a, a normal ward. But it's still, it's not a lane that's going too well. Oh, there we go. Sentry ward being popped down. Oh, Nyx Assassin with a solo kill at the mid lane. Haste Room was there and he gets a solo kill here. But too, much, too busy checking out this mid lane warding action. I get turned on by warding. Sorry about that, guys. Unfortunately, first blood is being missed once, once again. As uh, luckily for me, we've got the first blood being caught on camera here. Haste Room was grabbed by the Nyx Assassin, and oh, it looks like he impaled him, beat him to the rune using that impale, and then just chased him down. Quang, man, poor guy. He's just getting auto attacked down by a mag with no, by, well, by a Nyx Assassin, and he's got no mana. Haste on out. Great play there from the uh, Nyx Assassin as uh, some more, more kills being missed. But luckily for me, well, we've got this instant replay. Nothing gets missed here on the live stream at Beyond the Summit 2. As uh, Gizmo, well, they've got this trial lane pretty much keeping this bottom lane playing ultra defensive. You've got the Wisp Juggernaut really having some issues here. Enigma, he's in the jungle, being uncontested farm, but the problem is this is coming at the cost of, well, mostly bottom lane, but in some ways middle lane as well. Nyx Assassin has, well, got that solo kill and now has a one level advantage. Using that courier to just bottle crow for the time being. Top lane. How's the Luna vs Queen of Pain matchup going? Looks like Queen of Pain is the better of it for now. It's slightly out farming the Luna. See that bottle coming out I imagine. Yep, there's bottle and an L Talisman. Get the HP, HP mana region as well as just some cheap cost effective stats with an L Talisman. And where is that rune? Last time it was, the, it was the end of the mag. Going for that rune, getting beaten there by the Nyx Assassin. And once again, it's, well, it goes away the Nyx Assassin. CK, Lestrak, and Juggernaut, well, these heroes are... Well, C, sorry, yeah, CK, Lestrak, and, and Disruptor are looking to shut down this Juggernaut, and they've done so. Just three creep kills for this Juggernaut. He's unable to go anywhere near the farm. Oh, top lane. Luna taking a lot of damage. Queen of Pain, Chase is not on. Decides against it. Luna had a level three Lucent Beam. If you go blinking in, could have seen a Lucent Beam with a couple right clicks. It would have been close. I think it would have been very, very close, but whether or not being a kill was another matter. Juggernaut still got himself a couple more creeps since we last saw, but he's still very, very far behind. But the rest of his teammates are doing well. Oh no, this Wisp is not doing too well. He gets burst down, but I mean, Lestrek finishes off the kill, but the Juggernaut's teammates, Queen of Pain, Mag, Enigma, they're all up there as far as CS goes. They're doing pr pretty decently. The CK at bottom obviously leading the charts right now. And despite getting this first bullet at mid lane, Ken Rio is not managing to last it all that well against the mag. Top lane, Luna. Hits level 6 now, so this just makes it a lot harder for Queen of Pain to go in for kills. Oh, Luna. What are you doing? There's a Sonic Wave. Oh my gosh. Accelerate was there. Had the mana he needed for a Sonic Wave. And Luna, just getting way too cocky there miscalculates either I don't I mean should have known Queen of Pain was level 6 maybe the mana that Queen of Pain needed or just the ability to use another Lucent Beam he gets brought down the top lane 
And that's the first kill for the Near Illusion Indonesia side. CK left track at bottom lane. Still just free farming away is CK. He's got himself some treads in and now has a magic wand coming out soon. Rune is going to go the way, not the way of the Radiant team. They'll try to scout that bottom. Enigma and Disruptor both going bottom. Neither getting it. Rune spawn tops. And uh, Mag knows that. He is beat in there. Nixus hasn't picked it up. But the haste, haste rune as well. It was his undoing last time. These haste runes are just so crucial on this Nix Assassin. And well, he needs some farm. That's really the big thing that Nix Assassin's missing. If he had his arcane boots now, he could be doing a lot more damage around this map. He could haste to a lane, have a lot more mana to throw into these ganks. But right now, he's very low on mana. He could haste to use some bottle charges, but all he's going to have is, a, is an impale. Maybe if he uses up the full bottle, he, he gets himself enough mana for a mana burn. But... All in all, he wants to try and get those arcane boots up. Queen of Pain gives up, goes top, back top, just to basically try to deal with this Luna once again. Luna with that early death hasn't actually gone for Tranquil Boots. Oh, Tranquil Boots is what you really need against this harass coming from a Queen of Pain, but we're not seeing it. Oh, he's an Enigma coming up from the sides. He's level six. Is there mana for an ultimate disruptor? Going to be the one who gets focused down, maybe. Glimpse is there. Now we're going to see Disruptor get caught in a black hole with the Less Track. Two man black hole. Is there any fall damage to bring down the Less Track as well? Less Track's going to miss. Great stutter step. Side sets it forward. Gizmo's Melody is looking for some kills, but here comes Luna. Luna's TP'd in. They brought down the Enigma, and now there's Lu Le Nyx Assassin coming in from the back line. Four five man rotation coming up from Gizmo. They lost Disruptor, but they brought in Luna. They brought in the Nyx Assassin with the Haste Rune. He's now got his Arcane Boots. He's now got himself up to level seven. And Gizmo now find themselves five kills to two up on the scoreboard. Great rotation. And now they're going to try to get a tier one tower of this. I mentioned Leshrac won't go Edict. What do I know? He's gone Edict. Hard support Leshrac going for the Edict build here. I guess in some ways it's because Disrupt is going to be playing that hard support. We get Leshrac playing that four position. He can look to get some items. It's going to be Disruptor who has no boots. is playing very, very poor right now. Just got to play around with what little farm he's got. And when you get this early point in Edict, that's where you, when you win a fight like that, you quickly follow up with a T1 tower push. They get the tower gold as well. Top, top lane, Queen of Pain, accelerate. While it loots, four or five heroes went bottom. He's trying to take advantage of this top empty lane. Apply some pressure on the T1. Try force some TPs back. And who actually has those TPs to come defend? Luna doesn't right now. And it looks like we may even be seeing this T1 tower get brought down if there's no reaction coming from the Gizmo squad. The reaction's coming, but very, very slowly, it looks like. And Queen of Pain screams down the creep wave, and well, here's another creep wave. Trying to try to bring down this tower, and the question is, can anyone actually get here in time to either keep this tower alive or deny it? Does not look like it. Queen of Pain, the Null Talisman, the boots. The damage is there to bring it down. Oh, just. Radiant gets the last hit, and luckily for Queen of Pain, Disruptor was there half a second too late. Over on the mid lane, it's Gizmo, Ken Rio. He's now got himself up to about 500 gold. We'll have to see if he goes to that Dagon build. I absolutely love those fast Nyx Assassin Dagon builds. Unfortunately for him, he's not doing too well as far as farm goes. 28 creep kills now, but his gold's mostly coming from those kills and movement around the map. Top lane, Luna, Lesh, and Disruptor. They're, they're teaming up. They're looking to go for another push. They get the tier one at bottom. Now they want to get the tier one at top. With three points in the Edict, they can do so pretty quickly. Is the Glyph is on cooldown. Oh, man, this is going to go down really fast, especially with no Near Lucian Indonesia heroes in sight. It's an empty lane for him. Edict going to get popped and Leshrac going to go in. Here comes the next creep wave and this will be enough to bring down the tier 1 tower. Luna's going to try to get this last hit. God knows Luna needs this. Luna's definitely behind after that early kill being given up to the Queen of Pain. Does have a couple kills from that bottom lane, but all in all, it's not an easy time out there for Luna. Here we go. Mid lane. Counter push coming from the Near Lucian side. They want this tier 1 mid tower. They've got quite a few heroes here looking for it. Queen of Pain, Whispers, Walls, the Enigma. Enigma, the black hole being used upon lane isn't quite up yet. Oh, Nyx Assassin lands a perfect three man impel. Mana is there. First down the Queen of Pain. What a fantastic play. Whist now in all sorts of trouble. Does have the tether. Doesn't actually fly away from it. Mag. Up he. Just used defensively, trying to help his team run for their lives. And here goes the Lunar Eclipse. They finish off the Enigma. They get the Wisp with the Disruptor. Three heroes for nothing. They keep the T1 tower alive. They also get themselves in a fantastic engagement. And guess what? Much like bottom lane, they win a team fight, they push. This tier one mid tower is not long for this world. Mag's got no RP. He used it defensively, he used it when he was on the run, and now we see, well, this tier one tower gonna be attempted to be brought down by the Edict with some firepower. Mag is there trying to spam off the shock waves, but all said and done, it's Gizmo. Who are just happy to just basically take their winnings and retreat for now.
They've got some nice item progression coming in, not just on their main farmers. Uh, urn of Shadows up on the Disruptor. Oh, Disruptor. You may have an urn, but that bonus strength is not going to save you from that. Blink Tether. You get the additional stun when Queen of Pain blinks in. The Tether basically provides a second stun to go with that slow. And now they're going to try to get this tier 1 tower as a result. Dyer's Queen of Pain succeeds in doing so, so it doesn't get denied. As always, we see CK at the bottom lane. Where's his item? Drum of Endurance. It looks like it's going to be the item, but with that Bracer. He's been farming well, but we don't see that drum up just yet on him. As uh, Enigma over on the Radiant side. That's what he's going for. It's really one of three options. You either go for the fast blink, the fast BKB, or the fast mech. I say fast, but I mean, if you're not getting either fast, then you go for the slow mech, the slow blink, or the uh, slow... Uh-oh. Well, smoke gank foiled. They know what happened. I don't even have I, I don't even have to worry about saying it. They were four man smoked up and then suddenly get revealed. They know someone was invis on them. Whether someone had picked up an invis rune or Nyx Assassin was vendetted up, they know something was up. They smoked right into an invis Nyx Assassin. And unfortunately for them, they did not have sentries. They did not have dust. As uh, that's a wasted opportunity coming up from the Neolution side and they were really banking on making something happen with that. They have the Mag and Enigma Ultimates back online now and they want to make use of these. It's really hard to do so without Blink Daggers, which is why they're trying to use Smoke. Catch their opponents by surprise, and that basically can make up for the fact they haven't found their Blink Daggers yet. And there's uh, both teams settling down a bit now. Chuck's had his face booty. He's got the mobility from that. Luna. No items just yet being brought out, but there is something back at base. He's used his gold. And the Radiant team aren't going to know just quite what on just yet. The Dying team actually going for a push down the mid lane now. They've got three heroes here already with Nyx, CK, and Disruptor. They need that Lestrek. They need the Edict damage if they want to be able to bring down these towers fast enough. But there's enough heroes missing. They're going to see a four-man Radiant team at top, and maybe they're just going to go for this mid. Is there anyone there actually to defend this? And looks like they're going to just sort of go back. They basically, they end up stopping their split push. They're worried about this top lane. A tier 2 tower for a tier 1 is not going to work out too well for them. And uh, Sean's is there at the top lane, trying to stall this push as well as possible. And it looks like the push does come to an end. Now Juggernaut going to TP back towards the bottom lane. He needs more items. He needs more farm. A lot of these Radiant heroes are just falling behind as far as farm goes. Their net worth, well, the big three for them. Mag, Juggernaut, and Queen of Pain all behind the Dire team. I say that as Queen of Pain finally takes over the Nyx Assassin. Oh... Neither team finding too many kills as of late. Both teams being pretty proactive with their warding. Trying to get as much map control up as possible. And for the Radiant team near Lucian, this lack of action is probably good for them. The only action they want is a big team fight. If there's a big 5 on 5 fight, they'll take it. Because they've got the Mag Ultimate, the Enigma Ultimate, the Queen of Pain Ultimate. They've got all the AoE. They've got all the team fight. But they don't want to have any small skirmishes. And the thing is, they'll only take the team fight if it comes to them. They're not going to try to force the issue and go for a big team fight unless it's there. Unless they're defending a tower or looking at five man push. But they're not going to just try and take a scrappy little fight. Because right now they don't have blink daggers. Mag is no blink, Enigma is no blink. And as a result, landing those big AoE ultimates is going to be very, very difficult. Queen of Pain trying to build a BKB. So until that BKB is up, also Queen of Pain, hard to go in. Nyx Assassin, we've already seen earlier on at mid lane, just burst down the Queen of Pain. And there's so much to stable on lockdown. You've got Disruptor with a silence, Nyx Assassin with an Impale, Leshrac with a stun, CK with a stun, Luna with all sorts of first damage, and here we go. Gizmo, well, they found another kill. It's on the Wisp Assassin bottom lane. They're going to get three, two as well. Juggernaut silenced up. He can't spin. Even if he could spin, he wasn't going to TP out. He didn't actually have a TP on him. It was maybe his one escape. There was a spin TP, but he didn't actually have the, the TP, and he got silenced before he could spin. And Gizmo going to take their winnings and go back to farming. Head back towards the mid lane, head back top. You've got Luna still trying to farm up a Manta style. Or at least with a Yasha. We saw Hon Trash player of ABC go for a Yasha BKB build. And I think it's a really solid build. The Yasha accelerates your farm. You get that additional movement speed and damage to help you go through the jungle camp. To farm quickly, to move around the map quickly. And then the BKB is what you need to push. To be dominant in a team fight. So both either Manta into a BKB or just Yasha BKB. Both the strong item builds here. Queen of Bane, he needs the BKB of his own. We can see he's been working on it for some time. Unless we're looking at the Aghanim Scepter, but it just doesn't feel like a game to go Ag Scepter. You need the Magic Immunity. Look at this scary, scary lineup of nukes. The Dire Team BKB is less essential. 
Oh, Max Skewer, RP, he hits two. It's the CK as well as the Disruptor. There's an Enigma Black Hole, Queen of Fame, Sonic Wave. They instantly burst down two heroes. Great initiation coming out from Neo Lucian. He did take two of their big ultimates. Oh, Juggernaut, he's taking a ton of damage over here by a Lunar Ultimate. Luna brings down the Jug. Jug won't be about that one. Neo Lucian's Queen of Fame doesn't have mana to keep on chasing. Two for one trade. Luna luckily finding the Jug on the sidelines. It looks like he couldn't spin in time. Luna must have caught him on the high ground or something. Not too sure what happened there, but that Luna finds an easy kill on the Juggernaut. Juggernaut even uses an Omni Slash, so it looks like maybe Omni Slash to lead things off. And there's uh, top lane, well, Neo Lucian going to back off, and this is now a, it's going to be a two minute quiet period from Neo Lucian. They can't fight for two minutes, they've got no Black Hole, no Mag ulti. Even longer with the ending with Black Hole, that thing's got a massive cooldown, 200 seconds at level one. For Gizmo, well, we're looking at a CK get a lot of farm. This is the one hero who I don't think we've seen anything of. Have we actually seen Wisp use his ultimate? Maybe I've completely missed it, but I don't think Wisp has used his ultimate all game long. They just don't have that aggressive duo, the Wisp CK. Or something like, uh, even like a Wisp Ricky, whatever it may be. Wisp Lifesteal. It's, it's a Wisp Juggernaut, which is okay, but it just doesn't really... It gives him... He's spinning. He's not really auto-attacking. He's not really doing a ton of damage. And Oh, here we go. Mid lane. Gizmo, they want to push. They want to push pretty bad here. And with the two ultimates on cooldown, no black hole, no RP. They feel pretty confident about this. Leshrac needs to be careful not to start tanking this tower. He wants to get in there with the Edict damage. There is a glyph up, I believe. As uh, Gizmo going to play things a bit safe here. Even with those ultimates on cooldown, there's still that long-range AoE spam coming out from the Mag Shockwave. Got the Adelin top defend. There's a lot of sort of defensive... Nukes coming out from this Radiant Seam. And here's the uh, the Wisp Jug. I even look at maybe a relocate. Try to catch out some heroes on the back lines. And, ooh, there's your Nyx Assassin item. I'm not sure if that's a new item. It looks like he's had for some time. I don't see it in the, the log. I don't know if the Radiant team knows, so I, I, won't, uh, I won't spoil it. But Nyx Assassin has picked up something new. Luna, Mithril Hammer, Yasha. We're looking at the Yasha BKB build that Hon Trash player did earlier with ABC. I, I honestly, I, I, I feel this is one of the strongest builds you can do with Luna, especially in a game like this. If you're really struggling for farm and getting put under a lot of pressure, go straight BKB. But if you have the space to get some farm, the Yasha really helps. And right now, farm is what Gizmo want to do. They're looking to send CK top, couple heroes mid, one in the jungle, Luna bottom, Luna in the ancients, wherever they can find farm, they'll take it right now. They're really splitting them, splitting the map. Whereas Near Lucian Indonesia, they're playing a lot more scared. They're spending a lot more time grouped up. A couple of heroes here grouped up. A couple more over here grouped up. It's really just a m much more cost-effective use of their time, Gizmo. They've got heroes spread around farming more efficiently. And right now, Gizmo, well, they're going to have to be careful. This is... I mean, they're the ones ahead, but they, well, they are playing careful. They're making sure that when they go for these pushes, they're not being caught out. They're not overextending. And when you've got a Wisp on the other side of the map... It's very dangerous for them. Oh, Queen of Pain. Oh, Nyx. Oi, 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 oi. Misses the Vendetta damage, I think, and also misses the Impale. Big, big miss out from him. Meanwhile, on the back lines, it's CK getting burst down. The Wisp, he finally comes into play with that relocate and uh, manages to bring down the Chaos Knight. That Nyx Assassin. Dota Cinema Fails of the Week type material right there, unfortunately. He's been playing so well up until now. He's still 3-0-3, so his score doesn't reflect that play, but... We're going to see a quick replay of that CK going down here at the top lane, though, as uh, things have quietened down. And uh, it, was, it was the Wisp ultimate. He brought in the Juggernaut, Juggernaut with the Omni Slash, and, well, pretty easy, straightforward kill. Shockwave from the mag finished things off. Thought we've been waiting for. See Wisp come into play. He's been spending a lot of time inactive. That's his... Well, he's been in four kills here, but it really doesn't feel like it. He hasn't had his ultimate coming in, so it was really just that bottom lane where there was some constant aggression where he managed to get himself a couple assists. Queen of Pain now finds a haste rune in. Still looking for that BKB. Still unable to pick it up. Luna, on the other hand, hey, completed BKB. And the push now going at this top lane. Disruptor, Leshrac are there as well. Glyph I should be up still. I haven't seen him being used in some time. Leshrac, Edict, going to maybe force that out. You want to try time that Glyph with the Edict, because Edict is what does so much damage to these towers. Decides not to use it just now. Maybe gonna wait for the next push to come on in. And Mag. 
RP on cooldown for a bit longer. They have got the black hole up, but it looks like the dire team. They're not going to try their luck. They're still a bit worried about this. And they're worried about CK not being there, also not having really the farm he needs to take part in these fights. Looks like CK with this well, Ogre Club, Bell of Giant Strings, he's going to be building a Sand, probably into a Sand and Yasha. I think Heaven's Halberd isn't really a go-to item when you've only got a Juggernaut doing right-click damage. Sand and Yasha for the stats you get is a pretty... Uh, it's a nice little item. You get the agility, you get the strength, you get the main, you get the uh, movement speed as well. It's uh, You get some nice overall stats from it as... Uh, we will see whether or not he's just going to be a Sound and Yasha. Unless we're looking at the BKB. Maybe the Bell of Giant Strength is just sitting there for some extra HP and he goes for the BKB. Juggernaut, phase Yasha. Maybe he's even looking for a Sound and Yasha. Manticell straight off the bat isn't very likely for Juggernaut, I feel. Generally, it's similar, it's similar to the Luna. You go for the straight Yasha just because of how good of a, a cost effective of an item Yasha is, but you don't want to go straight Manticell. Manticell can come later after you get another sort of item, whether it's a Desolator. Shadow Blade, something that gives you some damage, some attack speed, some overall team fight involvement. There we go. ZGL with his teammates have brought down Roshan. They get the Aegis onto the Luna, and now Gizmo can maybe look to push. They don't have to worry as much about the, the big AoE ultimates because they can basically have this formation where Luna is on the front line, position himself so that he can't. Or if, if they want to engage, they can only engage on the Luna. And if Luna goes down to maybe a, a big ultimate or a big spell being used, there's an Aegis there, anyways. And once basically RP has been used maybe to kill Luna, then all that's left is a black hole. And Enigma without a Blink Dagger is not going to be able to easily get off a nice black hole. And we're not seeing that Blink Dagger up just yet. He has picked up this. Trying to get some map control for his team. Melody. It's not... Oh, there we go. There's your answer to the... Uh, what is it? Sanjin Yasha, Heaven's Halberd or BKB. Well, he's made his decision. He still needs about 800 more gold to uh, finish it off, though. And, oh, Luna... That does not bode well for you, Luna. Goes down once, there's nades being They don't look to take this fight. They're worried about the TP backup coming, and uh, Luna going to chase down now. Yasha is there for some additional movement speed, but it's only going to catch out a Queen of Pain. Maybe Blink coming in from the Nyx Assassin. He's looking to try to find a target here. Whispers on the back lines. Can he catch up? It doesn't look like it. Maybe if he could stun the Wisp using his Carapace. Walk into that spirit with a Carapace, man. And now the entire Dire team, they're top, but they don't have the Aegis anymore. They are in the, the, the kind of right place to be pushing here, although they do have to get, come back and get their Creep Wave caught up, but it looks like it's just a wasted Aegis for them. They still get the Roshan goal, but they're not going to be able to have that Aegis to play around with and use to help push. Black Diamond at bottom, well, forget, forget Blink Dagger, he says. He's, ha he's had this gem now, and he's looking to go for his next item here. And it's going to be the same as a Queen of Pain, BKB. BKB is really, I mean, it's all, you, having a Blink Dagger, unless you can catch five in that Blink Ultimate, it's not going to work out. You need a BKB against these heroes. You've got five heroes who can all cancel a Black Hole. Split Earth, Chaos Bolt, Lucent Beam. You've got two with the Nyx Assassin, the Carapace as well as the Impale, and then Disruptor, you've got two as well. The Glimpse as well as the Static Storm. Seven, seven potential abilities you can use to cancel a black hole on every single hero. Most of them with some range, a bit range as well. So unless you're catching absolutely everyone. And the other thing is, it's not like it's an ultimate. It's these short cooldown spammable nukes. Spammable disables that can be used to cancel a black hole. So the chance of Enigma getting off a black hole is pretty much no next to nothing without a B B K B BKB. So we'll see that BKB coming, and uh, so far the black holes have been alright. He's been using them in the smaller skirmishes, getting one or two heroes. The one good black hole at mid was really the highlight for him, and that's really all he can do until he has a BKB, is get these one or two hero black holes. He can't use it in a big 5-on-5 five -five team fight because, well, there's always going to be a hero that you miss. Luna continuing to farm, has now completed Manta style with that BKB. Elsewhere, it's the Neo Illusion side. They try and get farm up for their own, and yes, we get to see a Sanjin Yasha. I love this item. Something about this item. I just love the design, the coloring, and just all that sweet stats and movement speed you get from it. And what is this Nyx going for? He's got the Blink Dagger already. He's had this Staff of Wizardry. It's either the Dagon or the Four Staff. He's got two options here. Either the old Pew Mobility, or he wants some burst damage. And I feel a Dagon at this point wouldn't be all too bad. They don't really have a lot of burst damage. You've got, I mean, the, you've got all this lockdown. You've got a decent team, but you've got an Eclipse in there. 
Luna can do some nice late game carry, but having a single target basically burst firepower to bring down someone like the Wisp, maybe even bring down someone like the Queen of Pain. If you basically find Queen of Pain alone, oh, they found Enigma alone. That's who they found alone. He's got a gem. Queen of Pain, Sonic Wave pops a BKB. He's now completed. Wisp Dragon not going to come with an Omni Slash. Oh, it's going to get the two supports. Disruptor and Less Strike both brought down. Magnus is there. Brings down the Nyx Assassin. Three heroes ki killed already by the Indonesian squad. They're trying to make it more. In comes Luna. Eclipse is there. Is there enough illusion to tank this? Luna has maybe turned this fight around. Going to miss the TPing out Enigma. Three for one. They only get the mag, but great fight coming up from the Neo Lucian Esports Indonesia side. Great engagement there. They baited things. Well, I don't know if it was intended bait with the Enigma. Enigma was just deep warding. The important thing was they had the backup there. They had the Wiz Juggernaut ready to come in, and Queen of Pain was in the perfect position for a big Sonic Wave. And there we go. CK, he had his BKB that fight, but it just did not end well for him regardless. Pops a charge of it as well. And well, with that one fight, that's more farm, more time for Neelush in Indonesia to get back into this game. Get Enigma his own BKB. We saw Queen of Pain's there helping out, help win, help win that fight. It's really the first time this Queen of Pain's gotten really involved and done something uh, beneficial for the team. Spent a lot of time struggling in the mid lane. Sorry, struggling, uh, not struggling in the top lane. Since getting that first blood on the Luna, that, well, that solo kill on the Luna, I haven't seen Queen of Pain getting too active on the map, but. That there was what we need to see more of from this Queen of Pain. Helps this team get three kills there in the bottom river. Juggernaut. Sanjin Yasha with a Yasha. That's some, uh, some crazy movement speed stuff coming out. As, uh, that's going to boost up his movement speed nice and fast. Uh, I feel like there should be a Sanjin Yasha aura here. Maybe not. 403 movement speed. I guess that's what you're getting from the, the bonus 12% movement speed from this Sand and Yasha. As, uh, quick disconnect coming out. That's just one of the casters. The Neolution Esports time ne team need a quick pause, it looks like. Looks like they're ready to go. And once they have this BKB up on the Enigma, that's where this team fight gets really scary. They have nothing to cancel it in BKB form. It's guaranteed to get off a black hole with PKB on. The question is, can he, how many can he catch in it? Are we looking at three or four heroes caught in it? Or are we looking at just one or two? Because without a blink dagger, it's harder to catch that the many grouped up. But that's where the mag can come into play. Group them up with that RP. Maybe even force them to group up. Juggernaut also, in some ways, works well to group up heroes for that black hole as well. Problem is, because you, you, you can't basically spread out when you're up against a Juggernaut. It's really this interesting synergy that you can get from the Enigma with a Juggernaut there. You don't want to have the supports on their own on the sidelines when you have a potential Omni Slash which can just solo kill them. So it forces your opponents to stick together as three or four so they don't basically tank an Omni Slash by themselves. You want to spread the Omni Slash damage. As a result, Enigma, easy black hole. Mag, easy RP on multiple heroes. And he has got that Blink Dagger. Oh, mid lane. Nyx assassin has gone. He's gone blinking on it. It's a basically no man's land. CK with a BKB, luckily. Black Hole is not going to come. Static Storm cancels on. He goes to BKB. Queen of Pain trying to turn things around. Buyback from the Enigma. Juggernaut's going to be the first to take a fall as well. Mag goes down as well. Gizmo. They bring down three. Gem on the ground. Can they grab it or at least destroy it? No, doesn't look like it. Enigma's back. Recovers his gem. Giz Gizmo going to get to work on their tier 2 tower. And well, the Glyph is just going to stall this push. Really nice fight coming up from Gizmo. They're all a bit low now. May see them look to back things off here. But with Mag RP on cooldown, they go high ground. Edict is there, and these tier 3 towers are going to drop without the glyph up. That's where that glyph on the tier 2, they're going to maybe regret doing that. CK Illusions are there, playing additional damage. Tier 3 tower goes down, and now they get to work on the Raxes. 10 seconds on cooldown, the Edict. They'll get, it looks like, at least a melee barracks. Three years down, CK. Whoa. Stunned by the tether, luckily. Queen of Pain forced to scurry away, and it looks like they're gonna, just going to get back to work on these Raxes. Range Barracks is going to be the first to go down. Just Luna going for the closer target. Enigma trying to just walk on in. Does have a mech. Luna loose, loose beam in as well as an Eclipse. Doing a lot of damage. Only, actually does get the Enigma. Enigma bought back as well. Doesn't have any more buybacks here. Also chewed through a lot of gold. That BKB nowhere in sight now as Gizmo find themselves up a mid set of Raxes in a very decisive position all of a sudden. They're up two Raxes. They're up a lot of gold. Big swing going their way. Look at that jump. All on the back of one good team fight. The Nyx Assassin engaged with that Blink Dagger. Got off a nice stun and they managed to bring down the Enigma fast. The hero, the thing is, it, the same applies both ways. Neolution want the, the Gizmo side grouped up for an RP for a and black hole, but 
If Gizmo catch the Neo Illusion side grouped up, Static Storm destroys them. Enigma could not get off an ultimate with the silence coming to play. Mag only got off an alright ultimate near the end of the fight, but it just wasn't really enough. By then the fight was all but lost, and well, ZGL and this loon is getting more and more farm. Is this what I think it is? Oh wow, it is. I thought, well, it's not. I thought it was an eagle song. Turns out it's something a bit better. Luna with a completed butterfly at 30 minutes in. This next push is going to get very, very hairy to, to stop. I worry for this Indonesian side. Looks like they're trying to make something happen here. But nothing really comes from it. And now Gizmo, with Roshan respawning in the next couple of minutes, may just look to basically grab the Aegis and then go for another push. Get another set of Raxes for themselves. Tier 2 towers up on both bottom and top, so maybe while they wait for Roshan to respawn, they try push one of those, but... It's a game right now that's in Gizmo's hands. Four star from Nyx Assassin. Come on, man. Where's your dag on? Leshrac looking at a Bloodstone. It looks like he's got enough gold for it if he wants to dismantle those Arcane Boots. But for the time being, I think he wants to keep the Arcane Boots. It does help out some of his teammates, CK especially. Very mind spent. Nope. He's heading back. Dismantle. It looks like we're going to see that happen. All right. It's a Bloodstone. And that makes him a lot tankier and harder to bring down in these fights. Just the pure HP you get from that. And that's something that the Neo Illusion side is just lacking, is damage. They can lock heroes down with a Mag Ultimate and Enigma Black Hole, but how do they finish heroes off? Jug, he doesn't really have the right click damage. With an Omni Slash, you can maybe take out some of the squishy supports. Queen of Pain, same thing. You've got BKB. You haven't got any sort of damage on You haven't got any sheep stick to do with the carries. The only heroes Neo Illusion can really realistically bring down and kill is maybe some of these squishier heroes, the support. Disruptor, Leshrac, maybe the Nyx Assassin, if they can basically catch him a bit out of position without, position without a Carapace, but... For the most part, it's going to be very hard to defend. And this fellow's going to be back in just a second. There we go. I know the timing better than the players. It's, 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 it's as if I wrote down the timing. And uh, look at this tier 2 tower just melt. No time at all. No effort even needed, really, from Gizmo. They get the tier 2. Neelish now there to defend the tier 3, though. They're grouped up for the most part. And that's an interesting route. I have another suggestion. Let's just go right this way. Go right in. It'll be so hard for the Illusion to come fight them. They've got such a level advance. They've got such better map control. They'll take the long route, though. They'll take the long route. And uh, the Illusion Esports just trying to push out these lanes. They have to be so careful when this hero is missing from the map. They don't know where they are. They don't know if there's a smoke gang coming their way. If there's a, maybe a split push that's going to be suddenly coming from multiple lanes, they really have to be basically just putting all their efforts in, pushing out the lanes, getting whatever farm they can on their side of the map. Venturing out is just going to be so, so difficult. Juggernaut, he's up to 1,900 gold now, probably looking at a man's spell. And well, there's what I was talking about. Roshan goes down. CK does turn, well, he had that casual belt of giant strength. He turns it into a Heaven's Halberd, so purely designed at counting this Juggernaut. Probably not really an essential item, but hey, it's, it's tanky survivability. And Aegis now up, once again on the Luna. Luna with a butterfly, as well as a ton of gold on top of that. And the Radiant team, well, they're looking kind of for pickles, but they'll quickly realize it's a five-man push coming bottom lane. ZGL will just be in the front lines with his Aegis butterfly. He'll just work, to work away on this tower on his own. Maybe we see some CK illusions coming, but basically, the main thing is here for Gizmo, don't get caught in an RP black hole with multiple heroes. Illusions. It's just illusions going in. CK maybe as well considering this. Queen of Pain, BKB trying to go on the front lines, trying to bring down Sean's here, not really doing enough damage here. Luna pops the BKB as well as an Eclipse here, trying to bring down Enigma, succeeds in doing so. CK is there with a BKB of his own, with Juggernaut coming in on the back lines. It looks like they relocated in, but they relocate into their own death. Oh no, things going horribly wrong until the Mag RP arrives. The problem is there's no more backup damage. The entire Neo Illusion Indonesia side is just crumbling. Jug Omni Slash, the damage gets split between all five heroes. No one being brought, being brought down this Gizmo side. They've lost four. Let's make it five. Complete team wipe. Gizmo looks like they've sealed the deal. They get the team wipe. They get the bottom set of Raxes, and they can just go onto the tier four towers, go onto the throne. I don't see anything in their way here. Well, of course, there's nothing in their way. Five heroes down, 10 seconds on the Wiz, 10 on the Enigma. They'll be coming back still with a black hole up, but. This is just going to melt too damn fast. Mantis Cell's back up for the Luna. We'll see Edict being used in a second from this last track. And look at these Tier 4 towers melt. GG thanks has been called from the Neo Lucian Esports Indonesia team. Congratulations to the Malaysian Gizmo. They advance to the next round of the loser brackets here. Unfortunately for the Indonesians, 
They're now knocked out of this competition here. The Armageddon Dota 2 Grand Slam hosted by Armageddon. The stream here is being produced by Rapture Gaming. So a big shout out to Rapture Gaming Network as well as all of our other sponsors here at the Armageddon Dota 2 Asia Grand Slam. AMD, Starhub, E-Club, Asus, Zook, Sonic Gear and PowerLogic, all your sponsors of this event. Big, big shout out and thanks for making all of this possible. Those of you guys tuning in, thanks everyone for supporting the Beyond the Summit stream. I'm Gods from Beyond the Summit and a big shout out to everyone who's also shown up here at the Marina Bay Sands Convention Center to watch all the live action. Check out the teams. Come say hi to me. Thanks everyone for tuning in. We'll be back soon with more live action here at the Armageddon Dota 2 Asia Grand Slam.